Mythbusters. Adam Savage, Jamie Heineman. Between them, more than 30 years of special effects experience. They put them to the test. Welcome to Mythbusters. I'm Adam. And I'm Jamie. Today, we will debunk one of history's greatest myths. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a question that's plagued man for thousands of years. A question that's torn civilizations apart and stumped some of our greatest minds. Can a man set fire to his own fart? <laughs> Ready, Jamie? One second. I knew you'd done enough when I saw the guy over there going. <laughs> I've been clapping for half an hour. <laughs> I came here to get in to see the prices run. <laughs> I don't even want to see this douchebag. <laughs> It's a great day for America, everybody. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it is a great day for America and a great day for me. Why? I'll tell you, gay sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mythbusters Night on the show. People are going, why is he doing that? <laughs> I'll tell you why, because it's an awesome show and ours isn't, so if we invite <laughs> them onto our show, awesomeness may rub off. <laughs> so it's Mythbusters Night. Do we have a graphic for Mythbusters Night, do we? Yeah, there you go. That's it. You embarrassed me on Mythbusters Night! In my home, Fredo, where my children play with their toys. <laughs> anyway, if you haven't seen the Mythbusters, you're a jerk. Uh, if you haven't seen Mythbusters, it's kind of like Ghostbusters without the jumpsuits or the ghosts. <laughs> So it's nothing like Ghostbusters. Uh, Mythbusters, it's on the Discovery Channel. And like the title says, it's about something. It's about busting myths. And I like that the Discovery Channel has a whole show about busting myths, because Fox and MSNBC, they've got lots and lots of shows about creating myths. <laughs> but this is about busting them. Now, 
Mythbusters. It's really hard to say Mythbusters. I never noticed that until tonight. This is the last Mythbusters night we are ever had. <laughs> It's really hard to say. Couldn't you call the show crazy or something? <laughs> crazy red-haired guy and guy with the hat. <laughs> and their adorable cast. <laughs> Mythbusters was started by uh, Adam and Jamie. They're two special effects guys that used to work on the movies. They did special effects for movies like uh, Matrix Reloaded and um, some other movies that I don't know. <laughs> I think they might have done the Pamela Anderson Tommy Lee sex tape. <laughs> that thing has got to be a special effect. <laughs> it's like something out of Jim Henson's Creature Show. <laughs> Either that or Tommy Lee is Scottish. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Now, you see, Adam and Jamie, they're, the Mythbusters, they're, they're kind of my heroes, and you really get to meet your heroes. This is like if, if Derek Jeter met uh, Babe Ruth or if Mel Gibson met Hitler. It's a real big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal to me. Oh, that's right, yeah. Oh, me. Oh, me. I was the one on the PCH. Yeah, it was me. Yeah. Anyway, I like the Mythbusters show because it's about something. It's not some douchebag in a suit talking crap late at night. It's about <laughs> something. And it's not just about debunking myths. It's about blowing stuff up. <laughs> and that's awesome. Yeah. The only other place, uh, it's the only other place in TV where you can see stuff getting destroyed for no reason other than late night or NBC, where are they... <laughs> This seems to be working. Blow it up! <laughs> Why? Why not? <laughs> and the, the, the Mythbusters uh, take popular myths and prove if they're real or not. Now, most, uh, most modern myths, this is really hard to say. <laughs> myth, they can say myth all the time. <laughs> Couldn't it be called lie busters or something like that? Anyway, most modern myths are started by movies, actually, by Hollywood movies. For, uh, for instance, in one episode of Mythbusters, they proved that shooting a car's gas tank does not make it explode. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Makes you wonder what other lies were in the movie Tango and Cash. <laughs> I don't remember that movie either, actually. <laughs> One time on Mythbusters, they did an entire episode about the powers of duct tape. They plastered, not duct tape, duct tape. Not tape made of ducks, that would be cruel and unusual. <laughs> but let's be honest, hilarious and delicious. Anyway, <laughs> duct tape. Anyway, they, <laughs> they plaster duct tape on everything. You should try that. Another show is taping things up and make up for a much quieter episode of The View right there. You can just... <laughs> and there was... One of my... <laughs> Still not Plinko. <laughs> Anyway, one of my favourite Mythbusters shows was on last week. It was awesome. It was the Demolition Derby episode, where they raced a car through the desert, and then they drop another car on top of that car from 4,000 feet from a helicopter. That's entertainment, you <laughs> bastards! That's what it's about! I think the idea behind it was that they were trying to debunk the myth that dropping stuff from helicopters is not awesome, but it turned out that, yes, it is awesome. <laughs> Now, I watched that episode with my eight-and-a-half-year-old son, eight and three-quarters, actually, and my 60-year-old friend, John. The three of us, all riveted, sitting there. Now, how many shows can be enjoyed by someone who's eight, someone who's 60, and me who's almost 30? Sitting there... <laughs> you are... You are... I can remember. Testing me tonight! <laughs> I will bust the myth that guys who present TV shows are I can remember. I will bust that myth for you. <laughs> now, <laughs> I can't actually. I can't bust it. <laughs> it's confirmed. <laughs> On every 
episode of Mythbusters where they, they say, don't try this at home. Now, what they actually mean is, please, please, don't try this at home because lawsuits are really expensive. Because <laughs> they used to do that in Jackass. That every, don't try this at home. They would say that every five minutes. People tried it anyway. Every week, there were guys getting rushed to hospital after crashing their rocket-powered shopping cart or stapling their nutsack to their leg. <laughs> Which sounds painful, but you get used to it after a couple of tries. <laughs> now I can't start the day without it. Fiddle! <laughs> that and a cup of coffee, and I'm good to go. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back, everybody. We're back. And now, Craig's Spanish word of the day. Today's word is flatulencia. Flatulencia. Please. Welcome back, everybody. I'm sorry if I look a little pained this evening. I'm suffering from flatulencia. <laughs> Why, Craig, your Spanish is almost fluent now. <laughs> si, amigo, gracias. <laughs> My first guest tonight is uh, a Mythbuster. Really? <laughs> yeah. All the guests tonight are Mythbusters, except for the hot rats, who are awesome, but in a slightly less blowing things up way. <laughs> Only slightly. Uh, my first guest tonight is Tori Bellici. Take a look at this. Take... It almost seemed. Please welcome Tori Bellici, everybody. Tori Bellici. excited to be here. You're right excited now. to be here? But I have to be honest, uh, I am a late night uh, virgin. This is my first. Um, that's all so, right. Uh, I don't this is not cable. You can't say virgin here. Can you say virgin? Oh, you can say virgin, you just can't go beyond that. <laughs> No, I, nothing will happen to you here. This is, uh, nothing explodes here. Nothing even remotely interesting happens here. So you're safe, <laughs> you can relax and enjoy. That cannon thing there, that looked a bit like the uh, cannon had flatulencia. Yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a little bit of a letdown. However, that was like, that episode of Star Trek was probably my favorite episode since I was a little kid. Right. So, so to be able to, you know, reenact that as uh, Captain Kirk, that was like, you know. Yeah, but I mean, you were a bit thin. Yeah, well, you know, when, I mean, when the Gorn's chasing you, you, you do lose some weight. Well, yeah, but, you know, I mean, like, Kirk, even in, even in the early, you know, Star Trek, he was, he was chunky. He's been here, you know. Right here? Yeah, he sat in that chair. William Shatner sat in that chair. And then he simulated a dolphin sex attack with me right there on the floor. <laughs> Didn't he? He did. He went on vacation and uh, uh, apparently, well, here's a myth for you. Do dolphins behave in a predatory fashion sexually towards humans? Well, or William Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get involved with these guys? What happened? Were you... I was working with uh, Jamie and Adam. Right. Uh, we were doing special effects. Uh, we worked on Star Wars together. Uh, you worked on Star Wars? Yeah. You are as a god not to the, me. Not the original one. <laughs> yeah, but no, Can you, you couldn't work on the original one. You'd be like... Old. A fetus I'd with the original. Yeah, yeah. yeah pretty much. Yeah. Uh, but so, yeah, so I was working special effects, and uh, that's where I met. Jamie gave me my first job out of college as a model maker. And then Adam, like after eight years of working together, he yeah. got the show, gave me a call, and he was like, call, he left me a message. He was like, call me back. I got an opportunity for you. It could change your life. Yeah, and, and has it, do you think? Maybe, I don't know. No. <laughs> No, no, no. no you're, not, you're, too, not too much. But you guys still do the work. It's not like you just like put makeup on and then present. You actually have to clean up afterwards. Makeup? Do, yeah, yeah, makeup. We don't get makeup. This is the most makeup I've ever had on. Really? Yeah. I yeah. dress like this all the time. I'm like a drag you, queen. You, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you look good. Yeah, thanks, man. I, actually, you know what? I'm about 20 pounds lighter than this. This is pancake makeup. <laughs> You, you do actually have to do work, though, right? You have yeah, to actually do the uh, stuff. Know, a lot of people ask us. They're like, uh, who, like, when the camera's shut off, do you guys, like, go into your trailers and then somebody else comes out and builds the stuff? And it's like, the, no. 
Absolutely not. Like trailers, the only kind of trailers we have, we drive cars through them. Right, that was awesome. Yeah. The demolition derby uh, episode with the driving the car and the dropping the helicopter. But all you were doing in the helicopter was holding the point in the, the aerial while Grant was working the thing. You watch the show. I, all the time. <laughs> I am like, like you with Star Trek, that's like me with Mythbusters. It's very odd. <laughs> Although I'm finding it difficult to say. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. So listen. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie and Adam were here, right? Yeah. Now, J Jamie's quite sort of a quiet, taciturn kind of man. He's, right. he, he doesn't say a lot. I'm a bit scared of him. You should be. Yeah, he's quite tough, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he, he's like, he's the kind of guy that you don't want to upset. Like, Adam, you know, you could play a, a practical joke on him, but Jamie... But you electrocuted Adam once, and he was pretty upset. I remember that. <laughs> I was hoping people forgot about no, that. No, I remember it. They're playing reruns right now. You, like, 10,000 volts or something you put through them? Yeah, but if you look at the footage, did, I think we said um, we didn't know. What did we... He asked, did you guys attach the electric fence to this? And I replied, what would make you say that? <laughs> so I didn't technically say no or yes. So technically, I didn't really shock him. You have a career in politics ahead of you, young man. You should think about that. Really, that's Washington right there, yeah. man. Yeah. That was great. Thank you. You lied right to the man's face and my face, and Thank everybody you. went, that kid is great, isn't he? Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> Listen, are you... Are you, are you... San Francisco, is that where you're from? Because that's where you make the show, right? Well, I'm from Monterey. Monterey. And then I moved up to San Francisco to go to school. And right. Then, so what I, did you study at school? Awesome things? Yeah. <laughs> blowing stuff up, crashing things. Well, actually, it's funny is, like, growing up, I was training for this job. I and mean, I didn't even realize it. Did you blow stuff up when well, you were Well, yeah. I almost set my parents' house on fire twice. Um, <laughs> the first time, I wanted to see if I could make a uh, car paint gun into right. a flamethrower. Which that, that's fair. Which that's you fair. can. You can? It's, it's actually very easy. Yeah. CBS doesn't endorse the turn in <laughs> paint guns and flamethrowers. Yeah. CBS cares. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't try this at home. Don't try this at home. But, CBS cares. But try it at your neighbor's home. So that no, way. No, don't, don't. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so yeah, so I took the, the paint gun, filled it with gasoline. Maybe I shouldn't be explaining. No, no, you probably should. No, 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 no. Uh, but anyway, I lit the whole side of my parents' house, uh, and uh, luckily I got a hose and washed it down. The problem was, is the burn, there was this big black burn on the side of my parents' house. So I had to run out, get some fresh paint, so that way they didn't find out. It's kind of like a sort of explosive version of Tom Sawyer. You had to paint thing. <laughs> It's kind I didn't of a, thought of that. It's a beautiful American That's story. Good. It's heartwarming. Yeah. The problem is I couldn't get my friends to help me. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still have any friends left, man? Because you can blow up. No. I almost killed all my friends. Yeah, actually. well, yeah. You no, seriously. You play with explosives too much. Yeah. It's dangerous. So when I was 19, I made a pipe bomb and I almost killed my friends. Oh. Okay. See Virgin again. That's safer. <laughs> We're out of time. It's really nice to meet you, Tori. <laughs> Tori Malinci, everybody! Thank you. Welcome back, everybody! Welcome back. Well, the commercials tonight, I don't know if you enjoyed them as much as I did, but I love them. CBS cares. <laughs> Nobody here said virgin. <laughs> We are not the droids you are looking for. <laughs> Nobody cast here. <laughs> Ferguson did not say I can to the audience. <laughs> we are not the droids you are looking for. <laughs> My next guest is a Mythbuster. Take a look at this clip. <laughs> Why, it makes me wish I still drank alcohol. <laughs> Please welcome the lovely Carrie Byron, everybody. Carrie Byron. Welcome, Carrie. Hello. Welcome to the show. 
How are you? Very well. Good. It's very nice to see you. I've suddenly find myself emphasizing the second syllable of Mythbusters. <laughs> the show. I really, really love the show. I really love the show. I, I think it's, it's entertaining. It's got everything. It's got uh, explosions and well, that's all I really need from a show, actually. You might be our biggest fan. I mean, the details that you can pull from. No, it's amazing. Come on. People are more obsessed than I. They're on the internet all the time. Some people are sending you emails saying, Carrie, I love you. Not me. I'm not the guy sending them. But some people are. I get mail from every country. I'll bet you do. I get yeah. them. I get it from prison. <laughs> like, it, Me too. Right? Yeah. I got a lot of fans yeah, out there. I have got a lot of fans in prison. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably not as many as you, but you know, I do what I can. Now, you've just, uh, if I'm following the show correctly, you've just become a mother, right? You've just. How had... could you tell? <laughs> Right? No reason. I just thought, yeah, yes. I'm actually have. It'd be more comfortable if I just sat like this. <laughs> you, you had a baby recently? I did. Like this afternoon. <laughs> I have a six-month-old daughter, Stella yeah. Ruby. That's lovely. That's very nice. And is she blowing stuff up yet? Uh, only diapers. Yeah. <laughs> There was one vomit where I thought the head might go completely around. Oh, that, no. that was sort of an explosive vomit. No, no, you have to wait for that. That's a happy day, though. Yeah? Yeah, when the little one goes, ah! Yeah. It's very nice. Now, how did you get involved with uh, with this thing, the, uh, the Mythbusters? Well, basically, I wanted to be Jamie, Adam, Grant, and Tori. They worked in special effects, and I thought that was the coolest career ever. Did you know them? I didn't know them. Right. I, I, I heard of them. The things they were doing because right. I went to get an internship at M5 which is Jamie's uh, shop right my first day was the first day Mythbusters was filming so I never actually me. got into the industry Wow so you just a, a bit, you went straight onto the television show first day this is my first grown-up job really yeah Isn't that adorable <laughs> Jeez, I, I had a ton of jobs before this but I don't have your looks Carrie <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. No, it's the truth. So, um, <laughs> do they give you a hard time? Is it a very macho environment? Is it difficult for a woman to survive there? Or uh, or are they uh, not like that? They reconstructed and post-feminist. Uh, actually, it's, it's like being with your siblings. I mean, I don't really notice that I'm the only girl. We have a lot of women behind the scenes. Right. So, like producers and researchers and that sort of thing. So, it's so it only... doesn't feel like that when yeah. you're that. Right, okay. I'm the only girl on screen. Right. No, because they, uh, when, you, when you were, um, uh, you know, on maternity leave, they had uh, the uh, that other girl. Jesse, yeah. Is it okay to bring her up? Of course. All right. I didn't, like, kill her and shove her in a bag when I was done or anything. I... Did you? You no. killed her and shoved her in a no. bag? You just said. I even let her use my dad. You, you let, really? Totally. I think it was difficult for her because we got emails here. People were saying, how do you feel about Jessie? And I'm like, give her a chance, I said. Give her a chance. It was a little bit like scrappy do though. Do you know what I mean? It's like... When, oh, my God! No, it's hard when you, when you join a show that's already there. When I turned up here, people were very angry at me. Did they call you scrappy do? They called me scrappy do. They did. And worse, let me tell you. Much worse. Well, you're lucky. You don't have a bunch of cohorts that pick on you all the time. I do. That guy over there, he, like, he's always saying things like, oh, don't say virgin. Sorry for saying virgin. And, uh, that was awful. Did you uh, blow stuff up when you were a kid as well? Uh, no. I didn't. You're, back, you're training. You're an artist, aren't you? Is that mm -hmm. the thing? What, did, what medium did you work in? I did sculpture. Really? What kind of sculpture? Dark, creepy sculptures that made my parents question whether I was going to have a real job someday. <laughs> Did you ever make a kit of a glow-in-the-dark Dracula? No. I did. Really? Yeah. When I was a kid, I got this uh, little model kit of a, a, a glow-in-the-dark Dracula, and I made it and I put it in my room, but it was too scary. <laughs> I could, it was like having a midget vampire in my room. Which, actually, nowadays would be awesome. I'd be like, oh, how fantastic. But then I wasn't ready. So when you were a kid, you know, you're asking if we did explosions as kids, did you, like, have little talk shows and stuff? No, no. We did more in the way of stabbing when I was a kid. What? Yeah, it's pretty rough where I... It wasn't San Francisco where I grew up, lady. It's different. Yeah. Well, 
Well, there was the skirts, but other than that, you know. You know. Yeah, are you from San Francisco? Uh, I'm from just outside San Francisco. Where? Los Gatos. I speak Spanish. Oh, yes. <laughs> I saw that. Unfortunately, though, tonight I have flatulencia. I loved that opening skit. That was amazing. What, of oh, the, the part of the Mythbusters uh, thing that we did? Yeah. yeah. We seem to have got the essence of uh, Adam and Jamie. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that, but... It was great. Yes, you're right. Thanks for being <laughs> encouraging. What a lovely woman you are. The lovely Carrie Byron, everybody. Right back. Hey, Carrie. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the big Friday night Mythbuster special, including hot rats. <laughs> They're awesome. I just feel that we might be letting them down by not blowing them up at the end of the show. <laughs> or will we? <laughs> My next guest is a third in a trio of Mythbusters who are, well, he's not third. I mean, he's just third tonight. Third in alphabetical order, perhaps, but not in ability or stuff. <laughs> Take a look at this. Please welcome Grant Imahara, everybody. Grant Imahara. Thank you. Thank you very Welcome much. to the show. It's very nice to meet you. May I say, you may be the swankier of the Mythbusters this evening. Well, I figured I was going to be on your show. I should bring it. Well, you, you brought it, girl, and no mistake. <laughs> Thank you. It Thank was you. awesome. See that cannon you used in that clip there, by the way? Yes. That cannon. Was that the same cannon when you fired the cheese through the sail of the ship, the, the wheel of cheese? Yes. Uh, Tori made that cannon, and uh, we, we reuse a lot of our stuff. Yeah, I know. You use it all the time. I was going to ask you, you know what? Uh, this week there was a story in the news about because you're the robot guy right you make all the robotics yes. and the and there was a story about a sex robot that had been de <laughs> that had been developed did you make that no 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 uh let me i love making robots yes i don't do you love robots? i don't yeah i don't make love to the robots well, you, come on <laughs> really all right, well, it's that's fine. Creepy. That's all right. It's a little, did, did it not occur to you at a certain point? Because like, you're very talented with robots, right? You've been on the Robot War show, right? You know how to make robots. You're, you're kind of... I've seen you make a lot of robots. Did it never occur at a certain point? You think, you know, I could make a fantastic sex robot using this vacuum cleaner and an engine. <laughs> Well, it must have crossed your mind. Well, you know, but maybe, maybe once or twice. And then you probably thought, no, I will use my powers for good. That's right. With great power comes great responsibility. That's why. How come you get interested in robotics? Why, why, why that? It's it's been uh, ever since I was little. My parents bought me a Lego kit uh, right. when I was four years old, very small, and I would take things apart, put things together, and it's always been an obsession of mine. Do you ever go to Lego Land? I have been to Lego Isn't Land. Isn't it awesome? It is awesome. They have a land made of Lego. Oh, they've got all these incredible displays. Yeah. They've got a, a Lego roller coaster. I know. I've been on it. So have we. And you know when you, they have that Lego town and you can walk through it, it makes you feel like a giant. It's incredible. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that's what Lego, you, you thought Lego to robots? That's a bit of a leap. Oh, yeah. No, you know, it's a concept of building things. So I like to put things together. And uh, robotics is mechanical things. You just put them together. What about uh, what about the um, the uh, microchips and all the you know the we know the kids use the electronics, don't you? Do that? Yeah, yeah. I have a degree in electrical engineering. You have a degree in electrical engineering? Yes. Where'd you get that from? USC. Is that good? Yes, it's fantastic. <laughs> USC isn't that the one they always say University of Spoiled Children? Is that? The one? <laughs> I've heard that. Is that true? It might be. Yeah. yeah. It, it, that's a, the, so you're from a very wealthy robot-producing family. <laughs> yes. Yes, you might be able to say that. Are, yes. are, are, are other people in your family robot-orientated? Are your family robots, Grant? <laughs> <laughs> Have I been replaced by robots? No. I, uh, well, maybe. Maybe someday. Do you think that could happen? I think so. Really? Uh, technology's not quite here yet, but I'm looking forward to having a robotic body. <laughs> yes. Imagine. I, you do, I do, yeah. I think it'd be great. Which part would you like to be robotic first? 
it depends on what fails first, you know. And I have an idea. <laughs> We should talk later. Yeah, we should. Okay, yeah, yeah. Good. Were you ever were you drawn to the uh, the six million dollar man when you were a kid? You know the uh, oh, Steve yeah. Austin that could, they they changed all his. Yeah. Oh, I learned it. Da -da 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 -da. And you can jump really high. Yeah, six million dollars now wouldn't. wouldn't <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you'd get the the bionic yeah, you'd get finger. Yeah, bionic finger. Yeah. That you could see. Is but is do you think the robotics like the, pre creating the human voice apparently is very difficult? Can that happen now? Do you think? Uh, now, you can create the voice, but to really make it something that's uh, uh, something you can interact with, eh, maybe in a little while. Now, how does it work the, 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 in movies when they say they put the emoticon chip in the robot and then the robots want to take over the air? <laughs> what is the emoticon <laughs> chip, Grant? Well, you know, I think that's what, what they're referring to as the artificial intelligence. Right. Now, does that actually exist in science, artificial intelligence? Oh, yes. It really does? They are working on it. Right. Now, what does it, what, how does it constitute artificial intelligence? How can you ask it a question and it has, like, you've put the answer in there already, so it gives it back to you? That's not really intelligence, No, no, it? no, no, no. no. It's, it has to uh, decide for itself how it wants to answer. Right. Right now, you can, uh, you can simulate uh, the brain of a cat. I believe. Why though? Why? <laughs> baby steps. Baby no, steps. No, no, but cats want to eat you. Cats hate people. <laughs> you simulate the brain of a cat, that's when they'll start, and then the emoticon chip goes in, and then it'll be crazy. It the cat. Be. Cats. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it, uh, that's a horrifying idea. What? Don't start messing around with robot cats. I'm very worried about that. <laughs> All right, well, I, I won't get involved with right, that. Right, no, no, don't. Use your powers for good. Make the sex robot, but don't make the. <laughs> You don't want to make that. All right, very, yeah. well, then, very yeah. well. How did you get involved with the Mythbusters then? You were at USC and then you, did you know Tori? Uh, did you know Adam and Jamie? What yes, happened? Yes, uh, before the show I worked at Industrial Light and Magic doing special effects. Oh. So uh, Tori and I and Adam worked on Star Wars. Right, but the, but the other one. You had yes. nothing to do with Jar Jar Binks, did you? No, sir. Yeah. No, sir. See, we did the... <laughs> I did... hate Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Everybody I... hates Jar Jar Binks. Come on. We did the models, all the spaceships and robots, R2-D2. All right, well, R2-D2 is great. Everybody yeah. loves R2-D2. Can I ask you why R2-D2 and uh, what's the other one? The C3PO. C3 yeah, what's the tall one? C3PO. Right. Uh, still, yeah. Why? Is he gay? <laughs> no, he's English. He's English? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think all our questions have been answered. Here <laughs> this Grant MR, everybody. We'll be right back. Pump it up from the album Turn Ons. Give it up for Danny Goffey and Gaz Coombs. The Hot Rats, everybody. The Hot Rats.
Radio. Tú tengo pantalones. That cat's beginning to show off. <laughs> It's not a real cat, you know that, right? A robot cat. <laughs> Who put the emoticon chip in the robot cats? <laughs> meow, meow, meow. <laughs> Get the catnip. Ah. Anyway, you remember at the start of the show I said that Mythbusters was an awesome... Oh, see, I can't even say it. It's very hard. Mythbusters is an awesome show, and this show is crap. So if they're on this show, then this show would get a bit of awesomeness on it. But it didn't work. <laughs> so I think we've busted the myth. <laughs> that awesomeness is in some way contagious. We also learned flatulencia, <laughs> which they very helpfully wrote flatulence. Because <laughs> it's pretty hard to work this one out. <laughs> flatulencia, what the hell can that mean? Mmm. <laughs> so basically, we're trying to class up the place by having science and Spanish and we still end up lighting our own farts. <laughs> I guess we'll just have to accept what we are. And we are not the droids you are looking for. <laughs> This show was really good. <laughs> good night!